Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, September 17th, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of biotechnology. As you may know, human breast milk has some amazing properties that help develop a baby's immune system. This can be partially attributed to specialized sugar molecules that encourage the growth of healthy gut bacteria in the newborn. So a researcher at the University of Illinois wanted to study 2FL, the most abundant kind of special sugar using a piglet model, to understand the specific mechanism by which the immune system was boosted. Unfortunately, 2FL cost about $100 per milligram, so the study feeding it to piglets would cost around $1 million. However, the University of Illinois also had some awesome metabolic engineers, who then helped out by creating a strain of E. coli that produces this human sugar. This was possible because E. coli already synthesizes a precursor to lactose. They boosted that metabolic pathway and inserted a gene for lactose formation followed by another that allowed the bacteria to turn lactose into 2-ethyl. Using this, scientists can produce one gram for every liter of E. coli broth. The same amount would have cost $100,000. Now it can be produced in the lab with a relatively simple process, so it can be properly studied. But things won't stop there. If research shows the health benefits of the sugar to be significant, it could be synthesized on a larger scale and added to baby formula, maybe even added to soldiers' food to boost their digestive health, among other potential applications. Next, we have a story from the world of genetics. A group at the University of Rochester have been researching cellular aging and potentially how to slow or reverse it. Of particular interest is how DNA repairs itself. Being a cell's instructions means any damage causes problems. Fortunately, evolution has developed a number of mechanisms that allow cells to repair this damage, but as the cell ages, these mechanisms become less efficient. The amount of proteins involved with these mechanisms drops, and only boosting SIRT6 specifically had any anti-aging effects. This isn't extremely surprising, as previous works showed that SIRT6 was critical to the repair of double-strand breaks. Now, double-strand breaks are arguably the most serious kind of DNA damage, because if only one strand breaks, the other acts as a template for repair. So, there are two processes that deal with double-strand breaks, homogulous recombination, which is highly accurate, and non-homogulous end-joining, which is faster. As cells age, homogulous recombination becomes drastically less efficient, likely forcing cells to rely more on the end-joining mechanism, which also deteriorates with time. Extra SIRT6 seems to counter this, resulting in less accumulated damage, and mice engineered to overexpress it live longer. Next will be the investigation of SIRT6's regulation and the finding of drugs that increase expression to counter aging but also to prevent cancers caused by damage to DNA. Our final story is an update from the world of technology. For many people with diabetes, especially type 1, it's necessary to prick their finger and find out their blood glucose levels. Scientists in Germany have developed technology that may make the discomfort or pain unnecessary. Previous attempts have been made to build a convenient blood glucose biosensor, but it had three major issues. They were too large, often inaccurate, and required too much power to run. This new device effectively overcomes these design challenges. The nanoscale sensor, called a potentiostat, works by measuring the electrochemical activity of glucose reacting with a built-in enzyme, glucose oxidase. Despite being only 2 millimeters by half a millimeter in size, the device isn't just a sensor. It's essentially a complete diagnostic tool, capable of storing, sending, and receiving small amounts of digital information. They're durable enough to last weeks or even months, and radio frequencies can even be used to supply the 100 microamperes needed to power the device. For such a useful technology, the next step is mass production, as well as further development to integrate this sensor into many insulin pumps. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.